Sony just announced the brand new ZV-E10 camera that's aimed at video creators and vloggers who want something that's a step up from a phone or a compact camera in quality and features, but still small, light, and easy to use. So whether you're looking for your first camera or just a smaller camera to add to your kit for behind the scenes and vlogging, you're gonna wanna check this out. The ZV-E10 is a bit of a mashup of technology that we've seen in some other Sony cameras that's an attempt to make the perfect run and gun, easy to use vlogging camera. Let's break this camera down a bit, we'll do some testing and I'll let you know what I think of the camera and who I think it's for. First and foremost, it houses the same 24.2 megapixel APS-C size sensor that we see on the A6600 as well as the same processor. It can shoot 4K video up to 30 frames per second and 1080p video up to 120 20 frames per second. That APS-C size sensor is significantly larger than your typical point and shoot compact camera sensor and basically a giant when compared to phone camera sensors. In general, having a bigger sensor is gonna mean that you can get a blurrier background or shallower depth of field, as well as if you're shooting in low light situations, you should be able to produce higher quality images because of the larger photo sites on the actual sensor itself. The ZV-E10 has a slightly smaller body than the A6600, which I assume is partially due to the fact that they've used a smaller battery, as well as the fact that they've removed the electronic viewfinder. That smaller battery is the same one that we know from the other Sony A6000 lineup cameras and it's too bad that it is the smaller one but I understand why they made that decision. Just make sure that if you do get this camera you grab a couple extra batteries as well. Just like every camera in the Sony mirrorless system it accepts e-mount lenses which means that you have a ton of options both from Sony themselves as well as third party. This is one of the biggest advantages and one of the biggest reasons why someone might choose a camera like this over a point and shoot or compact camera that has a fixed lens. Speaking of those comparisons between the mirrorless lineup and the compact camera lineup, you'll notice that the name suggests it doesn't quite fit in with the other A6000 or A7 or any of those kind of mirrorless cameras. This camera is more building off of what they did with the Sony ZV-1, which was actually a point and shoot camera. But I think the common thread here is easy to use video creation and vlogging. The ZV-E10 has a similar very angle monitor that is incredibly helpful if you film yourself and also quite helpful for just getting different angles for both videography and photography. It's also got the same new three microphone system that we saw introduced on the ZV-1 that's supposed to be a step up from your typical on-camera microphones, as well as better to talk from the back if you're showing things in front of the camera. So this is what the onboard microphones sound like on the Sony A6600. In general, they'll get you by in a pinch, but they're nothing to write home about. This is a quick test of the new three capsule microphone that is in the ZV-E10. And now I've added the wind protection that comes with the ZV-E10 as well. So hopefully that helped with that bit of a breeze that we've got going on here. And this is what it sounds like from behind the camera, just in case you wanted to do something where maybe you're pointing at a boat uh, that just happens to be leaned up against a tree for some reason. And this is with the Rode VideoMic NTG on top of the camera. All that being said, the ZV-E10 does still come with a 3.5 millimeter microphone input if you want it, as well as it has the multi-interface shoe so you can use Sony's proprietary microphones in the hot shoe itself. Another feature that people were really excited about in the ZV-1 that we see carried over into this camera is the product showcase feature. This feature is designed specifically for people who want to show off objects in their videos. With one tap of a button, it'll change into a different autofocus mode where it will know if you're holding something up in front of your face so that it will choose to focus on that object rather than your face. This feature is great for tech reviewers, makeup YouTubers, really anyone who needs to hold objects up and it works really well too. With other cameras that don't have this feature, generally if you held up an object, it would still stay tracked on your face rather than switching over to the object. And the only way that you could get it to focus on that object was by completely obscuring your face or moving your face off of the screen or something along those lines. But in this specific situation where you might wanna be showing something off, it's really nice to have this feature. And all you gotta do is click that one button and your camera is ready for show and tell. 
But that's not the only thing that the ZV-E10 has up its sleeve in terms of autofocus. It's got all of the autofocus features that might be good for vlogging that we've seen in other Sony cameras. So for example, we've got face and eye detection in video mode. It's also got the newest object tracking where you can tap the screen and it does a great job of finding whatever that object is and following it around. And in my experience, Sony autofocus rocks. Another exciting feature for people who want to keep things simple is the background defocus feature. This was another one that we saw introduced on the ZV-1. With a single button press, you can get it so that it will change the settings of the camera to give you a more blurry background. And like we said earlier, this might be one of the reasons why you bought a bigger sensor camera. The blurriness of the background is still limited by the lens that you're using because this is actual physical settings, not like a digital blur like what they add on some phones. So in general, it might be a good idea for you to understand how shallow depth of field or blurry background works, but you don't have to know it, and that's kind of nice. Now, one thing that's really important to vloggers who like to walk and talk is stabilization. There are three main stabilization states. There's off, which is basically what you would expect. Then there is standard stabilization, which is basically turning on and off the stabilization in a lens if your lens has stabilization built in. If your lens doesn't have stabilization, this option will just be grayed out. And the final mode is called active stabilization, and this is that digital stabilization. It does add a bit of a crop, so if you want to compensate for that, you'll have to make sure you have a lens wide enough. Okay, so having a good camera is important for sure, but really quickly here, I wanna talk about something else that's super important for you if you're getting into online video creation, and that is great music and sound effects, and specifically the sponsor of this video, Audio. All of the tracks that you're hearing in this video are from Audio's extensive library of high quality music and sound effects. Having great music and sound effects can make a huge difference in making your videos more professional and more compelling, whether that be vlogs, tutorials, commercial work, anything. The team at Audio handpicks and curates every track in their library to give you the kind of quality music that you would actually listen to. And finding the tracks you need is super easy using their pre-made playlist for certain video types, moods, genres, etc., or by using their powerful browse features that let you sort through tracks by mood, genre, instrument, video theme, tempo, and more. You can pick which filters you want the track to fall under and keep combining until you find that perfect track. Audio also has different options for licenses depending on whether you want to access the music library, sound effects library, or both. You can either subscribe to a recurring license or you can go with a lifetime license and only pay once. And right now they have a promotion that's going on that gives you $100 off their lifetime music license. So for right now, it's only $199 to get that music license for life. If this is something that interests you and you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. Huge thank you to Audio for sponsoring this video, now back to the ZV-E10. This camera features a skin softening effect with a couple of different intensities if that's something that you're into, and it has a zoom rocker on the shutter button so that you can use it with your power zoom lenses or with Sony's clear image zoom. Clear image zoom allows you to zoom in a little bit during videos without any loss in quality. Even if you're using a prime lens, this gives you the ability to do a little bit of zooming. They've also made some significant changes to the way that you switch between modes on this camera. Instead of a mode dial, you've got a three-way toggle button that goes between photo mode, video mode, and S and Q or slow and quick mode that allows you to do time lapses or slow motion. I believe the idea behind this is just to make it super easy to get between the three main modes that you might need to use. They've now got a small light on the front of the camera that you can use as a tally lamp to let you know that you're recording, which I know is something that a lot of people have been asking Sony to do for a while now. There's a micro HDMI output on this camera as well as a headphone output and USB-C, which is actually a little more interesting than it looks. And the reason is because it's using a new type of connection called UVC slash UAC, which allows you to live stream stream with high quality without using any other apps. With some other Sony cameras, you could live stream over USB using the Imaging Edge software, but there were some limitations and the quality wasn't always the best. With this, you go into USB streaming mode, you plug the USB into your computer, and it should just show up as an option just as if it was another webcam. And it's super high quality, works with no other apps or software needed. So if you're looking to do live streaming or if you want to step up your video conferencing quality, 
this is a great option. And unlike the Sony a6100, the other entry-level APS-C camera that Sony offers, this camera does have all of the main picture profiles, including HLG, Cine profiles, S-Log2, S-Log3. The only one it doesn't have is the S-Cine tone profile. And on top of all that, the Sony ZV-E10 is priced pretty aggressively too, at $699 American or $799 Canadian for just the body, or $799 American and $899 Canadian for the body with the kit lens. Just to put that in perspective, the Sony a6100, the other entry-level APS-C camera, is $50 more than this. And the Sony ZV-1 is $750 US or $999 Canadian. Now keep in mind that the ZV-1 already has the lens attached to it, whereas with this camera, you have to choose which lenses you want to get with it, so it can get more expensive if you want it to, but I thought this camera was put in a really interesting place price-wise. Okay, so that's a reasonably complete look at what this camera is capable of, so here are my thoughts and who I think this camera is for. First of all, I think they've done a great job at hitting the market of first-time vloggers and video creators, people who maybe want to get something that's a little bit higher quality but maybe don't want the headaches of having something really complicated. They know they want the versatility of interchangeable lenses, but they maybe don't necessarily want the learning curve that comes with more fancy gear. As I've said before on my channel, I am not a viewfinder guy, so I am totally okay with the fact that they don't have a viewfinder on this camera. That being said, I know it's a personal preference for some people, so just keep that in mind. This camera is light, compact, reasonably inexpensive, and it delivers the same high quality that we expect from the Sony a6600, which literally costs twice as much. I would have loved to have seen sensor stabilization like we have on the a6600 or the ND filters that we saw on the ZV-1, but I understand that that might have made it bigger or more expensive and would have kind of defeated the purpose of a compact and inexpensive camera, but it would have been nice. If you're someone who's looking to start creating videos or vlogging, especially if you're filming yourself, this is a fantastic option. You can use it to start to learn the functions of a camera, or you can just slap it in auto mode and let it do the work for you. And then, like I said before, people who already have fancier cameras, but maybe want a light and compact, easy to throw in the bag kind of option for behind the scenes or vlogging, or even just a second angle, this is also gonna be a great thing for that. So if it's not already evident, the Sony ZV-E10 is now taking over the spot for the camera that I'll be suggesting when people ask me what their first camera should be, when they're looking into getting into vlogging and YouTube video creation. I really do think that it's a great beginner camera at a great price point and a great way to learn. But as always, I wanna hear what you think, so leave a comment down below, and on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. No, not this one. And then there's... Guys are loud. Yeah, I'm walking along and I'm talking to the camera, don't know what to say. Now I'm walking along and I'm talking to the camera, feeling pretty strange. Yeah, I'm walking along and I'm talking to the camera, and I probably just stepped in bird poop.